<laughs> Emily and Zach get to read together every week. Zach is usually a little bit nervous reading in front of people because he's worried about making mistakes and feeling kind of stupid, but not with Emily. Emily is a great listener. She's interested in the story, she asks questions on occasions, and she never laughs at mistakes. Zach looks forward to seeing her every week. Even though she drools, and she leaves hair behind. <laughs> but that's just what dogs do. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever considered that dogs could be a transformational force in education? Think about it. What was it like when you were learning to read? Did you experience that paralyzing fear that rose inside you when you were called on in class to read out loud? It's intimidating, to say the least. Almost like speaking in front of a big crowd. <laughs> Many of us froze with our minds going blank because of that fear we were experiencing. But what if it's not just fear? What if you're a struggling reader? below the reading level of your peers, without much reading support at home, maybe trying to learn a new language. According to the Annie E. Casey Foundation, we know that kids need to learn to read by the time they enter fourth grade so that they can read to learn for the rest of their lives. Another study says that for every 10 kids behind in reading level at the end of first grade, only one will ever catch up. Only one. What happens to the other nine? It's as if they go forward in life with one arm tied behind their back. However, there is an upside to the research. It says that the skill deficit between average and below average readers can be largely erased with appropriate early intervention. What if we could provide a safe, calm, comfortable, non-threatening environment for these kids to practice their skills? And what if that environment included a dog? But not just any dog, a trained, tested, and insured therapy dog. Why a dog? <laughs> Dogs in a classroom? I mean, how can this be a constructive intervention? <laughs> There's numerous studies citing the emotional and physiological changes that occur when a person interacts with a dog. Things like blood pressure going down, heart rate decreasing, social skills improve, overall relaxation improves, and depression is diminished, just to name a few. And we also know that the presence of a dog creates a positive social atmosphere, and this is an essential precondition for learning. With these things in mind, 20 years ago, it occurred to us at Intermountain Therapy Animals that the same benefits we see working with children and therapy dogs in healthcare settings would transfer effectively to the reading environment. We created a full-fledged literacy support program in which kids read to therapy dogs. And we call it READ, for Reading Education Assistant Dogs. <laughs> The majority of our programs take place in schools and libraries, but the possibilities are limitless. We also have programs at hospitals, domestic violence shelters, homeless shelters, youth lockdown facilities, and we work with kids with learning disabilities. We provide a safe place for struggling readers to practice their skills. Our dogs never laugh when a child makes a mistake and we work with only one reader at a time. We arrange our setting in a quiet location at the facility. We have a big soft blanket that everyone can sit on, and we encourage the child to pet the dog or maybe even lean against while they're reading. And this is where all those physiological changes that I mentioned occur, and the optimal precondition for learning is set. 20 years ago, my great Dane, Maggie, and I were reading with a third grader who stuttered. And it was incredible to see how much that stuttering decreased 
when I simply reminded her that she could pet the dog while she read. We also have many positive ways that we train our handlers to interact with the child. They monitor fluency and comprehension. They have discussions about the story. They encourage the child's imagination. And they even provide books for the children to take home. But one of the best things we learned was to teach our dogs to look at the pages of the book. <laughs> <laughs> and then we encourage the handler to ask questions through the dog. This helps the child believe that the read dog is interested in the story and paying attention. <laughs> this technique has become more effective than we ever imagined. <laughs> On one occasion, we have a handler in Wisconsin who has a mini dachshund named Biscuit. And the handler has trained Biscuit to sneeze on command. <laughs> <laughs> so one day, Dylan was reading a story to them. And he read on the pages, there were three ladies sitting outside with bananas in their hair. Knowing that was not what was printed on the pages, <laughs> the handler cued Biscuit to sneeze. And then she said, Dylan, Biscuit's wondering, why did the ladies have bananas in their hair? And Dylan looked back at the book and read it again. And then he said, oh, Biscuit, I'm sorry. It was bandanas, not bananas. <laughs> and then he turned to the handler and said, boy, Biscuit really knows her stuff. <laughs> It's important to stress that this program is designed to work with therapy dogs, not just any dogs. These dogs are well-trained, and their obedience skills and temperament are tested regularly to ensure they're not only safe, healthy, and reliable, but that they're empathetic companions, and they love children. Each one is a registered and insured therapy dog. Our volunteer handlers are also well-trained facilitators of the session. Anything can happen on that reed blanket, and they are prepared for the unexpected. However, every once in a while, there can be a showstopper. On one occasion, while reading a story about a new baby coming to a family, the child stopped and looked up and said, I know how you make babies. The handler took a deep breath and replied with some trepidation, you do? And the child said proudly, yes, you drop the Y and you add I-E-S. <laughs> it's truly a dynamic harmony between the handler, a trusted adult, the read dog, an active, curious participant who listens, and the child who experiences less fear and pressure while reading. Research shows us that the program is definitely working. We see not only improved reading level skills, but we see greater participation in other areas, improved social skills, and the cherry on top, the kids who participate develop a love of reading and books that goes way beyond the read session. We have kids return years later to tell us how much this program has changed their lives. Like Jordan. Jordan got to read with Drew, a retired racing greyhound. And eight years later, at age 15, he found us at a library. And he told us, I used to think reading was a chore, a hassle. But Drew got me reading at a higher level. And he got me reading for fun. I just can't tell you how much this program has helped me. Reading to Drew is something that I value to this day and will never forget. 20 years ago, a small group of us saw the need, and we created this program. And now, this small idea that began in Salt Lake City has grown to over 6,000 registered read teams all throughout the United States. <laughs> <laughs> and 25 other countries around the world. <laughs> we 
We've traveled to places like Japan and Sweden and Spain to educate others about the program. And I had the privilege of going to Taiwan last year and seeing firsthand how they've developed the program. Not only has there been a significant shift in the culture in regards to dogs, but the program is so effective that the Ministry of Education now requires that all elementary school teachers watch a video that demonstrates the power of reading to a dog. Our friends in Taiwan have served 20 elementary schools, including one school in a native area and several after-school library programs. And now I want to tell you about the legacy of a sweet black lab with soft brown eyes named Cassie. Cassie and her handler in Wisconsin had an after-school read program. And they were so popular at the library that when the children's department wanted to paint a mural on the wall, they insisted on including Cassie. <laughs> when Cassie passed away unexpectedly, the children gathered around and they were sharing memories of their time reading with her. And one child said to Cassie's handler, I'm really going to miss her. If it hadn't been for Cassie, I never would have made it to the fourth grade. Research now confirms <laughs> what we've seen thousands of times over 20 years, that we can make a difference in the life of struggling readers, opening up whole new worlds to them, one dog and one child at a time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.